Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We are live in San Francisco at Pier 48 at the GE Minds and Machines uh, Conference. It's their fifth year they've been doing it. It's bigger than ever, 3,000 people. Pretty much the who's who of GE. If you need to network with anyone at GE, you should get up to San Francisco before the end of the day tomorrow. But it's, we're really excited to be here. It's the first time we've really come. And uh, as advertised, Beth Comstock just stopped by. You know, there's a lot going on. But the man who's up next needs, needs no introduction. He only goes by one name. There's Bono, there's Cher, <laughs> and then there's Hima. Hima Makala, thanks for uh, joining us. Good yeah, to see you. Awesome, thanks for being here. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So, so we last caught up about, we were talking about six months ago yeah, at yeah. GE Predicts Transform. Yeah, yeah. 1,700 developers, just went GA. Yeah. Five months have passed, six months have passed. Yeah. What's happened in the last little while? Um, actually, it was uh, Feb 28th or so when we went GA. 1,000 developers, we talked in August, uh, transformed, that was our big uh, first developer conference. And uh, we went from 1,000 to almost 19,000 developers. How many, 1,000 to what number? 19,000. 19,000, that's uh, pretty uh, that's a big ramp, steep right? up and to the right. Yeah, yeah, and so we went from uh, pretty much zero partners to around 250 partners. We went from uh, two to zero applications to like really big three applications. So uh, the growth has been tremendous. You know, um, I've always said this, the platform is nothing without its partners. Right. And so we've had a lot of the partners come help that, fill that gap with the platform and sort of take the platform to the next level. I mean, yeah. But it's hard, it's hard to start a platform. You need yeah. to have to start a, yeah. you know, nobody ever just goes and buys a platform yeah, yeah. or participates in a platform. And it's a competitive world yeah. for the developers, but as, Absolutely. as Jeff Immelt said in the keynote tonight, or this morning, you guys are all in. He yeah. said he's in it to win it. Yeah, yeah. And clearly the numbers support that, that, uh, Absolutely. that, that statement. I, I think the key is no platform has succeeded without its applications. And for the, we talked about this last time, for the industrial customers, the technology doesn't matter. What matters to them is the outcomes, right? Right, right. And so for them, it's like, how do I get to the outcome faster? And so we've sort of invested in uh, asset performance management. We acquired a company called yesterday, ServiceMax, field service automation. It's a key part of how we offer services to our customers, right? We sell assets and we do maintenance on them. Field service is a big part of that. And so we acquire the company that enables those applications, uh, gives the applications to the customers to manage their field service tasks much better. And then the last sort of application category is digital thread or brilliant manufacturing. Right. All these assets get made in you know, manufacturing plan. How do you increase the productivity of that manufacturing plan? That's an area we have invested in. So you can think of these three pillars, asset performance management, a digital thread or brilliant manufacturing, uh, and field service are the applications that ride on top of the platform that accelerate the development uh, and outcomes for the customer. But I think what's really powerful in the, in the platform statement yeah. Yeah. is that you recognize, you guys have a long history, yeah. you're very good at what you do, but you don't have all the smartest people in the room yeah. inside your four walls. So yeah. to open up the, the platform to a partner ecosystem, whether that's developers, yeah. whether that's partner companies, whether that's yeah. competitors, whether it's Third-party yeah. analytics yeah. Yeah. is really a statement that you know Absolutely. we are we see the bigger picture. It's not yeah. just about GE and what GE does. And I think Bill made this statement earlier today. Um, the incumbents in the pla in the sort of software space are going to get hit by just the same way networking companies. The mobile operators got hit by open, open source, extensible platforms. We had the luxury of saying that's our sort of DNA. Right. We're going to build a platform that's going to enable different businesses to come in, partners to come in, and build the applications without us doing everything. I, know I throw this number out, and I don't know if it's going to stick. 10% of what the platform is going to be is going to be done by GE. The rest of it will come 10%. from- 10%. 10%. The rest of it um, has to come from partners, has to come from ISVs, has to come from the system integrators delivering the applications, has to come from ISVs like um, you know, ServiceMax and others who are building on top of the platform, other sort of domains have to be built on the platform. Right. And I think that's where, you know, as we bring in the ecosystem along with us, both the ISVs and the SIs and the OEMs, and that sort of extends to the edge of the uh, market also. If you look at it, 
we talk about the platform as an edge to cloud platform. Edge includes sensors, it includes gateways, appliances, and that's where we are partnering with Intel, partnering with HP and so on, so, and, and, and the Dells, so that we, ha we have millions of these gateways that can run the platform. People think of platform as just cloud. Right, A right. large part of the platform is running in these operational environments, and so being able to create an ecosystem of these manufacturers, OEMs, to run the platform, that is the key. You know, you would have heard the term predict system today, um, so that's our approach to how do you take all of this and run it in various environments that, are, uh, um, that the customers are comfortable with. So how far are you on that journey to only being 10%? Yeah. Um, assuming it was all you day yeah. one, or maybe it wasn't yeah. all you day one when yeah. you went GA nine yeah. months ago. Um, I need my job for a long time, so <laughs> we're going to do this Still one. make it yeah. and make your way. Uh, so we, we're going to, I, I think, when I said the 10 person, we're going to continue to contribute to that key part of the platform. Right. There's going to be a lot of layers that surround it, right. which you know will continue to do acquisitions, will continue to partner with you know, ISVs, but uh, you know, building a cloud platform, building a platform is a multi-year journey. Right. That's what I tell you know my customers. Right. Uh, don't think today you're going to have everything that you need. You got to step on, and this is what Bill says. Right. The digital transformation is a journey. You don't get done on day one. Right. So right. step on the train. Continue to work with us. It's a collaboration. It's not a customer relationship. Beth also said that same thing. Right, but that's what I was looking at my notes. Beth, Beth's uh, phrase was in the emergent era, which I just yeah, loved this yeah, morning. That right. you know, get comfortable with uncomfortable. Exactly. We're not there. We'll never be there. We have yeah. a thing inside that we talk yeah. about. You know, we're always here. Yeah, yeah. We always want to go there. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like the mirage Absolutely. on the freeway, right? It just yeah. keeps moving as you keep moving. All of us have to be on the train. We all go together. And then I think Beth also said this, right? Um, it's also a cultural change for all the customers and for us. It's no longer leadership hierarchical, it's about collaborative, it's about a bottom-up style. Right, right. And, and so that's the big part of this cloud movement, it's a big part of this platform movement. Yeah, I think it, she said, you know, or, organize around information flows exactly. instead of a hierarchical. Yeah. And, and it was interesting too, I think, when, when Jeff said, you know, put yeah. good people in positions yeah. to execute and really to change the management style. And, yeah. and um, it's a 130 year old company, yeah. but clearly there's a huge investment and, and the leadership is all in. And if you don't have the leadership in, yeah. then you know it's just kind of it's kind of words on a slide. I, I think that's the key about this. Um, you know, one thing that's been amazing to me was someone asked me one thing that you've been surprised at with GE, it's the buy-in that we have from the leadership, right? I mean, Jeff is all in in this, right? And not just from a technology, not from what we do as investment, it's also about the culture. He always says this, right? This next generation is about doers, not just leaders. Right. Right. If you look at traditional industrial companies, it all starts and stops with the leaders, but now it's the doers, and that's what he said. The people who do it are, are more important, are, are as important as the leaders who do it. Right, but it's, it's funny the parallel, because uh, Predix is a cloud, even yeah. though it's a cloud to edge. Uh, we do a lot of stuff with Amazon on the, yeah. on the public cloud, on the, on the consumer side, and, yeah. and the enterprise side, and, you know, Andy Jassy is quietly underneath Jeff's uh, guidance there, building you know one of the most successful software companies yeah. of all time. And so for Jeff Emmelt here to say yeah. that GE wants to be a top 10 software company Absolutely. by 2020, I hadn't heard that before. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I've been paying attention to the yeah. uh, to the to the quarterly calls. Yeah. But that's a pretty bold statement Absolutely. for a huge big iron, industrial, planes, yeah. trains, and automobiles company. Uh, I, you know, I got goosebumps today when we re I read one of the press releases that talked about Exelon partnering with Power uh, does an enterprise software license deal with Predix. I mean, that's like the story of uh, traditional software companies, and we, you know, GE Digital is being talked about in the same context. Right. And so, it starts with Jeff, you know, sort of giving the support to drive this change, both technically and culturally, and from a leadership standpoint. I mean, um, we already are in the top 15 something, but, but we have said, we compare ourselves to the top cloud companies in the world. The Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, who, that's who we compare with. Right. We don't compare ourselves with the SAPs and the Oracles. I mean, they're good partners, but that's what we, who we want to be, right? And so it, it's always, um, we have that luxury of starting from nothing, if I have to say so, right. at least 
from a platform standpoint. Right, right. But um, I mean, with, with, with his support from a top down, influencing the leaders to buy it into the digital transformation, buy it into the platform, and a large part of adopting the platform has to come from these applications. You know, that's a hard challenge, right? Every team wants to move it at its own pace. So he helped us bring that together. Right. And, and, and to be successful with a platform and to have partners and to have developers, you have to be attractive to developers. Yeah. And we do close to 100 events a year, and everybody wants the developer. Yeah. Everybody wants the developer. And you come from yeah. kind of the classic enterprise uh, IT space, but what you offer is two things that are so appealing to developers yeah. today. A, the ability yeah. to, to do open source and do cool technology yeah. and work with Docker and, and, and work with some of yep. these cool and innovative things, but more importantly, work on big problems, right? And big problems, and yeah. you know, it's summed up in, in what I think is really an interesting yeah. television yeah. Uh, commercials about, yeah. you know, this is the place as a software yeah. engineer that I can yeah. solve really, really big problems. Absolutely. I mean, it's like, someone asked me, why do you work here? It's like working on things that matter, working on things that make a big impact. And so, one thing that the developers who I talked to, I was, um, I think you and I exchanged, uh, had a conversation about this, I did a keynote at Facebook's At Scale conference. Right. Who would have thought someone from GE Digital, of all places, would do a keynote at a Facebook conference where there's a lot of developers who are more hacker-like and so on, right? But a lot of my engineers, when they were at the conference, got stopped and were asked, like, what is digital about? What is Predix about? Because everyone's curious. How do I work on something that makes a difference? How do I work on things that makes a material impact for health for power, for energy, for transportation. Right. And that's what we do every day. The use cases we deal with, and that's what we give to the developers. That's what we give to the partners. That ability to target use cases, have use cases that they can build on that make that impact. And that's what excites, I don't know if you've seen this, I've seen a difference in what developers look for these days. Right. They want to make something that matters. They want to make something that matters. They want to be yeah. able to see it. Yeah, yeah. And they want to see it. But I'm, I'm curious on the on the Facebook at scale, and for those who haven't been, it's a really geeky, yeah. it's a really geeky show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hardcore. Yeah, yeah. Why did they invite you? What yeah. was your talk? And, yeah. and, and, and why do you think that they would do that? Because from the outside looking in, it looks like a complete mismatch. Yeah, and, and I had the same question. Why would you want <laughs> GE to talk about Besides it? Besides you're a nice guy and you're yeah, very articulate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I think the key was, um, the, uh, it's all about scale. What they were interested in was, how does GE deal with the scale of the data, the scale of the computation that we have to enable to our customers, and so they want to understand how are we dealing with the hard challenges, right? And that's what, because if you look at the kinds of problems we deal with, you know, uh, we've talked about this, the jet engine, uh, one, giga, one, one, uh, one terabyte of data, or half terabyte of data, how do you build a data infrastructure? How do you build a compute infrastructure so that the data scientists can deal with that data from multiple flights, multiple airlines, right. and do some outcomes? That's what was exciting to them to understand how, do, how have we been able to solve that problem. And so, we are on that journey. You know, we're building that cloud. We're building that edge infrastructure so that we can collect the data at the edge the right way. And that was the message. That was the learnings that they were interested um, in, in sort of understanding how we how we do that. The other thing I think is so interesting in the way you guys parse the buckets of data in yeah. so many different ways. We we were talking earlier about the digital twin. So yeah. whether the whether the digital twin is a part, yeah, a, a system, yeah. a, a, an ecosystem, you yeah. know, an entire field, you're collecting data and parsing that absolutely eight ways to Sunday. And, and that that was the other part. Uh, one of my Part of the conversation was about industrial machine learning. Machine learning, which is a part, a big part of the digital twin, is about the scale, and so that's what was interesting to the audience. That to go back to your digital twin, you know, at the, at the basic of it, it's a combination of the virtual model of the asset, um, the analytics that can operate on the asset, and the data that's coming from the asset so that you can make some outcomes, right? And, and so, being able to do that at scale and be able to give that ability to the customer so that just like we go to Google and say, find me the closest restaurant that serves Indian food, you, can, you should be able to ask that digital twin, when is the last time a particular asset, a locomotive of the same type, 
failed so that I could do predictive maintenance on that. Right, right. So you can see the parallels in us, a digital twin of us in Google, or a digital twin of us as a shopper in Amazon, we will have the digital twin of the assets in the Predix cloud, right, right. so that operations folks can ask those questions to extract outcomes, to extract knowledge. Right, right. And to do that at scale is what is interesting. And the other thing that's fascinating to me is this kind of bifurcation of, yeah. of analysis to the individual yeah. and the aggregate, yeah. but not the average anymore, yeah. right? Yeah. Everything gets lost in the average, yeah. but now you're simultaneously at the individual yeah. unit level, yeah. as well as taking a more macro uh, view absolutely. where you can get bigger yeah. trends. I mean, if you look at it, right, any enterprise, they want to optimize their individual assets, but they also have multiple of these uh, systems in place so that they can do a macro level right. optimization. And so that's what, if you look at what they're trying to do with the twins, I don't know, I heard the number 250,000 twins or something. We got to find that out, the exact <laughs> number, but I mean, the amount of data that's there and the amount of questions and intelligence that's there, it's, it's a mind blowing for me. So uh, let's shift gears a little bit, because yeah. uh, as we talked before you came on, you weren't able to come this morning because yeah. the cloud needs its code, right? Yeah. You still yeah. got to push yeah. code, you still yeah. got a day job. Yeah. So in terms of your day job and, and what you guys are working on yeah. on, on Predix, what are some of your kind of short term priorities? How yeah. is that evolving as you guys are now building a bigger yeah. ecosystem? You've, you've got traction in the marketplace. Yeah. What are some of your priorities? What are some of the things coming up next for you? Absolutely, um, I think fundamentally just continuing on the digital twin theme, um, our ability to let create millions of digital twins in the cloud, and so we're investing a lot in our graph engine, we're investing a lot in the model, uh, standardized models where customers can put their uh, asset definitions. That's a big area because at the end of the day, that's the bread and butter of the platform so that customers can create their twins. Um, the second comes this ability to run the analytics at scale against the data streams that are coming in at, at high volume, right? And so we're investing a lot in high ingest uh, uh, capabilities in the cloud so that these gateways that are running in the edge can put in a lot of data. All right, uh, uh, Spark and that Spark kind of stuff. Spark and Kafka and those kinds right, of things. Right, all right. And then we're investing a lot in being able to truly be an edge to cloud platform where you can write these analytics and move them using Docker, using various container mechanisms in the edge. And so we're building um, the ability, we have an edge SDK called the machine where you can deploy these applications and analytics in the edge and you can manage this topology in the cloud. Right. And then finally tying all of this um, security, cyber security, uh, ensuring that uh, your uh, devices are secure, your network is secure, your cloud is secure, so we're investing a lot um, in the security front. You're a busy guy. Yeah, like you said, <laughs> right? The core, um, uh, cloud doesn't wait for mines and machines. <laughs> All right, well, Hima, I appreciate you stopping yeah. by. I'll let you get back. You got to go push some more code, yeah, probably. Yeah, uh, yeah. Tomorrow's a new day, right? The sun yeah. comes up uh, again. Uh, uh, but thanks, really Jeff. appreciate you stopping by. Thanks a lot. It was always fun talking to you. Absolutely. So, uh, he's here, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE. We're at GE Mines and Machines at Pier 48. Thanks for watching. All uh, right, thanks, man.